I have been playing a couple of new JRPG games. I'm loving this art style and you guys know that. This one is quite new, Fairy Fencer F Refrain Chord. And also I have been playing Little Witch No Better, which is not exactly new, sort of new. And I have the limited editions of them also, which I will be unboxing at the later part of this video. But I will give you a quick review and summary of the games and you can see for yourself if they are something for you. Now let's start off with Fairy Fencer F, Refrain, Chord, review code provided, thank you so much. It is a game by ID Factory and Compile Heart, and I am a fan of them. So this is a new game, the second one in the Now series. The first one was released all the way back in 2013, Fairy Fencer F, Advent Dark Force. I reviewed that game many years ago. That was the game that was re-released so many times, which I made a point of in my review, if you guys remember. And now, 10 years later, Later, they are releasing a second game in the um, universe, but this game has a different gameplay style than the first one And I never actually expected Fairy Fencer F to get a second game in the universe But here we are the first Fairy Fencer F game uh, was a dungeon exploration RPG and this one this time around It is a tactical grid based combat RPG. It is out for the switch PS4 PS5 and PC when I saw this announced I was excited because I am and was a fan of the first Fairy Fencer. They were so funny, the gameplay was good, the characters were extremely likable, I loved Fang. But I have to say, the immediate setback for me when I started playing this, I'm also playing this on the Switch, by the way, also. <laughs> So the gameplay footage you see right now is the Switch version of the game. The immediate setback for me was finding out that it has no English voice acting. I don't know what it is, but I cannot completely relate to the characters when they talk in Japanese. And I've said this before, I just enjoy when games have English voice acting because I'm already a multi-language person, I don't know. So English voice acting, I feel like that makes me more immersed in what the characters are saying and it's a thing. Also, I think a big part of why I liked the first game as much as I did was because of the storytelling and the funny dialogue and the great English voice acting that the first game has, which this one doesn't. It just made the whole experience so much more enjoyable. And I think in my first impressions of this game, it is lacking that particular charm. The humor and the dialogues, I feel like they are different. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if they have different writers, dialogue writers from the first game to this one. So that is something worth mentioning. There were just more jokes in the first one. Now, gameplay wise, it is a Fire Emblem game, essentially. You have your turn to move your units in this grid system. Some of them can move further than others and they have normal attacks and skill attacks. There is a singer on your team, providing a buff for all units that are in range and I had to turn off that singing in the settings because that drove me nuts instantly. I have to be honest and say I am not immediately hooked. Even though I love the art style, I already am familiar with the characters and the universe from the first game like I mentioned. I will be playing it more, definitely, but I'm not hooked. And I just somewhat miss the original gameplay genre. I wish they just made a second Fairy Fencer game with the same gameplay style as the first one, because this one is entirely different style. This is Fire emblem -y and the previous one was a dungeon crawler RPG. Completely different. The first one had actual 3D explorations and dungeons and turn-based combat, but you know you can't have everything. The performance isn't the best either. It's way better on PlayStation, but I'm now talking about the Switch version, but it is absolutely playable. It's passable. But you know what? I would get this game regardless because of how much of a fan I am of the first game, which I still recommend more the first game, I mean. But as an ending to that, I guess I could say that this game is for the people that are a fan of tactical RPGs, because if you are, then you will get what you want from this. It also has that beautiful anime art style, which I know a lot of you guys are a fan of. And the collector's edition looks rather sweet too. Now, 
<laughs> now let's talk about Little Witch No Better, which I have been playing for a month, I think, on and off, that is. <laughs> so many games. But it is out on PC, PlayStation and Switch, and it is a cute dungeon crawling action souls-like game. This is not an easy game. It's a souls-like sort of, but not too hard. A lot of people in forums are saying that it is really easy, but you know what? Uh, that depends on what you define as easy or hard. I did find myself grinding a lot in this game, and I will soon explain why. So, you play as this little witch, no better, literally, and you enter this castle, and the entire game is set inside of this building, where you are going from one save point to the next one, and it is often a challenge. Not only because the enemies are tough, which they sometimes are, but sometimes there are puzzles, and it's a whole thing figuring out where to go next sometimes. There there are no maps in this game, so I had to memorize this castle on my own, which I actually found exciting to do. It is a simplistic game in a way, as it is categorized as an indie title. The RPG elements are light. At every save point you can upgrade your abilities such as uh, health, mana, stamina, strength, intelligence and haste and I focus on intelligence and health as I have found my favorite combat style to be using the ice magic. You can also do a tiny bit of melee damage but the ice magic is the most fun one. That was my favorite. You also have healing items and even some unlockable costumes. Graphics are good. I like the graphical style. Like I said, it's a more simplistic game overall. Knowing that going in, you'll be fine. The art style of Nobetta, I'm loving that. I'm all over that. She's looking really crisp and really good. Now, I cannot speak for the Switch version necessarily because this one I'm actually playing on the PlayStation. I found a lot of enjoyment in this game. Maybe put it on your wish list. Same with the uh, Fairy Fencer F uh, Refrain Chord. Or if you have a PlayStation, play them on PlayStation. But then again, I love everything. I love the Switch and PlayStation. I play on everything, okay? But so cute! The physical versions of these are so cute. I'm just loving this art style. <laughs> Maybe I should just display them. Like that. I want to know what you think also of this game. But before you go, let's check out some of the stuff. Okay, so all of this was sent from the publishers. Thank you again. Here we have a Nobetta plushie. She's sleeping, probably tired from all the work that she put into the castle. There we go. And then we have this thing, which also comes with the collector's limited edition. Limited edition? I never know the difference between limited and collector's edition, you know. Funny. It smells good. Cool. Now the actual collector's edition. It includes an art book. Sturdy big art book actually. And this is what I call an art book. It is a fat book. <laughs> well, uh, it's just high quality actually. All of the uh, artwork, the places, locations, concept art, a ton of things. And smells really good. This is such a art book. Now here is the Little Witch No Better steel case. Pretty standard steel case. ID Factory style. And at the very bottom, we have the official soundtrack with 16 tracks. But who owns a CD player nowadays? <laughs> None of my laptops has a CD drive, but you know. So I think this is a very nice collector's edition. You definitely get a fun time. Uh, the game is also good. Good game. I like it. And when it comes to Fairy Fencer, same goes with this one. Just a beautiful box. Box art is on point. You have a somewhat thinner art book in this limited edition, but it still has concept arts, all the characters. What I like about this art book is that it actually has a story at the end. Look at that. Story. And then we have the steel case. Pretty good. <laughs> Do you guys collect steel cases? You know what, I have a ton in all of my collector's editions. Imagine if I just took them all out and put them next to each other. One day I need to do that actually. Are you like me? Do you, you just keep them inside of the actual collector's edition? Some people are very into steel books, but I have never been. Are you? And you? And then we have the original soundtrack. Wow, a ton of tracks on this one actually. Like 25 and 23, almost 50 tracks. The music is good. <laughs> but the music is good in Fairy Fencer. 
Very good. And this limited edition also came with this thing, which surprised me kind of, because I opened this and I was not expecting what I saw. Freaking notes. If you play the piano, there are actually a couple of songs that you can be playing on your piano in this. Yeah, two songs, yeah. Cute. <laughs> Some of the things that I just had on my table right now is uh, this grip. It is a retro flag grip, has that GameCube vibe and the C-stick like the GameCube had. I've been using this. Thank you so much for sending this review unit over retro flag. I'm liking it. Only downside with this one is that it has a bit noisy buttons. I cannot silently bed game with this grip on, but this is my preferred grip uh, as of right now. I'm also liking the Skull and Co one. Hello. Yeah. Oh, I also got sent over these 8-bit dough little controllers. So what do you think of Little Witch No Beta and Fairy Fencer F Refrain Chord? Let me know. Let, let me know down be no. And if you haven't already, please follow my Instagram. Link down below to my Instagram, Isha Gaming on Instagram. Now, thank you so much for watching today and I will definitely see you later. Jag har sett att jobba, sett att faktiskt spela in en Youtube-video akkurat nu. Här. En timme steg kanske. Åh, oh god. Ah.